great welcome. Um, it's not quite 4.30 yet, but the, for the interest of time, we all gonna get started. It looks like a majority of people are here. Uh, we're expecting up to 80 participants today, which means that uh, the topic of wellness has touched a nerve. Uh, and what we're gonna see today is how that nerve, especially the optic nerve that we talk about when with screen fatigue and all that's entailed into teaching online, um, a great, a great amount of empathy has to go out to teachers who are preparing lessons online, teaching online, and then having feedback sessions and whatever else that's needed to get through the course and get students to succeed in their course. Uh, it's a monumental effort. And these uh, sessions are, are uh, we're hoping that we'll give you uh, practical and pertinent strategies that can be applied to saving your mind, your eyes and your body to a certain extent. And speaking of body, uh, keep in mind that there, are, there is an ergonomics workshop coming up on April 16th, but I'll remind you of that uh, when we wrap up at the end. Uh, also, for those participants who are here today, we have uh, four prizes to give away, all of them having to do with uh, essentially screen fatigue, or as it's known in the literature, Zoom fatigue. And uh, those prizes include um, screen glasses, so without much further ado, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker today from Concordia University is uh, Jewel Perlin. Forgive me if I've messed up your last name, Jewel. And Jewel is going to walk us through uh, essentially something that's fairly new in the literature because what we're doing these days because of COVID is fresh, is new. And Pearl will, uh, excuse me, Jewel will give us her pearls of knowledge into how this can be done to save our eyes and save our minds. So please, Jewel, take it away. Um, welcome everyone. Uh, as uh, Frank kindly introduced me, so uh, my name is Jewel Perlin. I'm a psychologist at Concordia University in the Counseling and Psychological Services. And today I'm going to share my screen um, and I'm going to talk to you about how to alleviate screen fatigue, uh, which most of us are um, having to manage with now. So blurred, burning eyes, dry, itchy, red eyes, accompanied by headaches, fatigue, and an inability to concentrate. You are not alone. You could be suffering from the latest digital age affliction, screen fatigue. In this day and age, it can be really hard to get away from screens. We work on our computers, relax in front of our TV screens, and get more information and news than ever on our phone screens. We connect with loved ones on our screens. We socialize, exercise, and relax all on our screens. The dramatic increase in video calls and virtual meetings as millions of people work from home to stop the spread of the curve of COVID-19 seems to have many benefits, but it's not without its drawbacks. Screen fatigue is a real problem and having many negative effects on our physical, psychological, emotional, and social health. Screen fatigue is also known as computer vision syndrome or CVS. It is incredibly common. It is a condition that affects Canadians who work on computers and can be triggered by any screen, that being our smartphones, laptops, tablets, iPads, and TV screens. So I would like to just take a moment to acknowledge that we are all likely participating from near or far on traditional territorial lands of one of the many Indigenous groups. And today, I would like to also acknowledge that it's home to diverse populations of Indigenous and other peoples. We respect and continue the connections with the past, present, and future, and our ongoing relationships with Indigenous and other people within the Montreal community. So I'm going to start off by doing an icebreaker activity. And what I would like to do for the icebreaker activity is introduce you to the 3 to one waterfall. Many of you might be aware of this, but how it works is, is that I'm going to ask a question. You are going to uh, write your answer in the chat box, but you're not going to click send until I say 3 to one waterfall. And then all together, you will send your answers and we will get a cascade of answers like a waterfall. So what I would like to start off with for the icebreaker activity is introduce you to a Mindful Monday exercise. This month is Mindful March. And I'm encouraging you to take some time to look within, to be mindful. That means to learn to be more aware 
and about our well beings in all aspects of our life. We can practice mindfulness by the way that we eat. We can take care of our emotions by being mindful. And we can also be mindful in our relationships by engaging in mindful communication. It helps us to get more in tune with our feelings and stops us from dwelling on the past and worrying about the future. So we get more out of our day today. Mindfulness means that you are in the present moment, that you are focusing on the task at hand and that you are only doing one task at hand. And so it also helps us to identify what we are grateful for, which has been proven to boost our happiness. So I would like us to take a moment to pause to take a breath and to really take in what's around us. So the question that I ask you today is, what is one mindful action that you did today? I would like you to answer, put your answer in the chat box, but remember, don't press send until I say the magic words. So the question once again is, what is one mindful action that you did today? And three, two, one, waterfall. Press send and together we can see the cascade of answers. So as they come in, I see that some of them are about sharing experiences with loved ones, smiling and exercising, going for a walk, uh, dancing, listening to music, practicing gratitude and uh, watching the wind blowing the trees. Thank you all for sharing these mindful moments that you engaged in today. Greatly appreciate it. We're also, I also want you to hold on to the idea I'm mindful as I talk about how to navigate screen fatigue a little bit later on when I talk about the tips. Now, one thing I also want to highlight is um, in positive psychology, which is one of my areas that I'm passionate about and that I love, there is a website called Action for Happiness. And I saw that a lot of you were looking for tools and tips about how to engage your students. And this is a great way to engage people in learning is by presenting them with an action calendar of different things that they can do to boost their positivity and to engage in mindfulness. And so this month was Mindful March. And if we look at the various activities that are throughout the month, we could do them. And if you take a look at today, which is March March 29th, it's notice what is working today and be thankful that it is so. Other things that you could do is like number 17, look around and spot three things you find unusual or pleasant. And number 27, which we're going to get to a little bit later, is have a device-free day and enjoy the space it offers. So here are some ideas about how we can engage in mindfulness and how we could practice it in terms of learning also how to navigate screen fatigue. So I'm going to skip this slide because I know that most of you talked about what you hope to learn from this workshop, and I hope that I was able to address all of your questions. Um, but these are some of the learning objectives, uh, because it's always important, as you will learn about one way to navigate screen fatigue, is to have an agenda, to have learning objectives, to know what you are going to take and get away from the hour that you're going to be spending with me. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to focus on learning what is screen fatigue. We're going to also look at recognizing the signs of screen, screen fatigue and understand what causes it. And most importantly, which most of you are interested in, is we're going to learn how to identify what you can do about it from research based strategies. So I hope by the end that you'll be able to walk away with a toolkit of skills for coping with screen fatigue and that these will be practical, effective and immediately, immediately usable strategies. So what I'm going to ask you all to do, which is a little bit different than the three, two, one waterfall, is this is a brainstorm chat. I'm going to ask you if you could tell me what do you think is screen fatigue and you could start putting your answers into the chat box as the ideas come up to you. So what do you think is screen fatigue, please write your answers in the chat box, but I see that you're mentioning headaches. Um, and you're also mentioning about not knowing when to stop from being at home, um, sitting in front of the screen for too long, tired eyes, blurred vision. I hear over Zooms, which we're gonna definitely talk about, uh, a foggy brain, unable to focus. A lot of what you're talking about is the physical symptoms, uh, neck and back pain, eye strain. So thank you all for contributing and for sharing those. Um, and I have some other people talking about their mood and feeling overwhelmed. So thank you very much for sharing those. Um, so I am going to talk a little bit about what is screen fatigue. So there are many reasons um, to restrict the amount of time that we spend in front of our electronic devices. 
It's be the, for example, more hours sitting at a computer screen means fewer hours being physically active. And looking at a computer screen at night can stimulate the brain and make it difficult to fall asleep. We have been inundated with more devices and screens than ever before in this new world era. As I mentioned before, there's TV screens, tablets, phones, computer screens, and added to the fact that the pandemic has resulted in a sharp, sharp uptake in the usage because for all of us becoming remote workers and learners, it should come to no surprise that our eyes are paying the price. Computer vision syndrome, screen fatigue, uh, and also known as CVS, has been defined by the American Optometrist Association as a group of vision-related issues derived from long-term use of electronic devices and screens. So most of you were, were right, prolonged use of screen time. Computer vision syndrome results from staring at the screen for a long period of time, and that can lead to two problems. One is dried eyes. That's caused by a lack of blinking. When you look at the screen, you're so involved that you forget to blink. The blink rate goes from normally 15 times a minute to five to seven times per minute. And this has been explained by Dr. Garner, an ophthalmologist with Harvard affiliated Massachusetts Eye and Ear Infirmary. And you need to blink to reestablish the tear film on your eyes, a thin layer of liquid that protects the surface of your eyes. If you don't blink enough, your eyes dry out, causing blurred vision and discomfort. The other main problem from staring at the screen for too long is eye strain. And this can be caused from the brightness and the glare. So we talk about this in terms of the LED lights that are coming out of your computer screen. And also the lighting of your room. Eye strain can also be because you are sitting too close to the screen and perhaps don't have the proper prescription. And so all of this can cause eye strain. Some research even suggests that eye strain may result from the difficulty focusing on the test, text or images on the computer screen, in particular because of the pixels that create the blurry image. So why do we find video calls so draining? So, I want you to imagine this scenario, which most of you can relate to. You're teaching a class over Zoom or any of the apps that you use, uh, but video conferencing apps. And after completing the lecture, you immediately fall asleep in the guest bedroom, doubling as your office. You think to yourself that while teaching has always been exhausting, you have never calmed out like this before. Before the pandemic, you have been teaching live classes full of students, whose emotions you could easily gauge. Now, like countless people around the world, the COVID-19 pandemic has thrusted your life into a virtual space. In addition to teaching remotely, you have been attending weekly staff meetings, going to conferences, tutoring students, maybe even having a weekly happy hour with friends, extra cl exercise classes online, perhaps an arts and crafts activity for self-care on the weekends, and even cooking and eating a virtual Easter dinner with your family members and friends. All of this is done over video, video conferencing apps. When you are on these video calls all day long, you feel chained to the screen. You find these virtual interactions extremely hard on the brain. The experience is taking a toll. For millions of people now working from home, video calls and virtual meetings have become the new norm overnight. And that doesn't come without any, with all their difficulties. This is why some people experience what I refer to and the psychologists refer to in the literature as Zoom fatigue. There's the computer glitches, the dropped connections, the spotty Wi-Fi, the constant app and software updates. And those are just the technical issues. Video calls make us communicate in different ways too with prolonged eye contact, a lack of body gesture, all the while we stay in one position, the same spot. And according to Laura Dudley, who's an associate clinical professor and director of the Applied Behavioral Analysis Program at Northwestern University, video calls do require more brain power because it is a different form of communication that we're used to. We are not used to not receiving nonverbal cues. And the other part of it that we have to realize is, is that 70% of communication is nonverbal. 
So although the words are important, it is how we communicate them too. And the other part of it is that also when we're staring at the screen for prolonged periods of time, if we look away, then it looks like as if we're not paying attention. But that is not necessarily true, because if you were to think about whether you're teaching a class or in a meeting, you would sometimes look away outside of the window, see what was going on. But that did not mean that you weren't paying attention to what was happening in the classroom. So although Zoom fatigue is not an official diagnosis and it can be described by using all uh, video conferencing platforms, so it does work with whether you're using Skype or Teams or anything like that, and it's not found in psych psychology textbooks or DSM, it is a condition that has been discussed a lot in the psychology literature in terms of what has commonly been affected, being discussed and uh, being experienced by individuals now during COVID-19 in terms of the what we call the exhaustion, the burnout, those overwhelmed feelings that were described when people were describing their screen fatigue. And so what's important to notice is, is that sometimes we need to figure out how to navigate why these video calls are so draining for us to make the change. So the question is, what can we do to combat it? So if all of this sounds like bad news, don't despair. In the next session, I will section, I will explore the signs of screen fatigue and discuss solutions and steps one can, date, can take to combat it. I will present research-based strategies that can help make video calls less exhausting. And there are some top researchers in the field, like John Perno Pellerini, who's an associate professor of INSTED, and also Marissa Shuffler, who's an associate professor of Clemson University, who study workplace well-being and team effectiveness. So the sign, screen fatigue. So as I mentioned earlier, do you start to feel an irritated or painful sensation in your eyes after you've done a video call or even before you finish the call? As most of you discussed, you have these symptoms that are here. These are the physical symptoms of screen fatigue. And so when you spend too much time staring at your screen, you can suffer from these. And what it is, is that these are sore eyes, vision problems, um, it could be blurred, blurred vision, it could be excessive tearing or blinking, it could be headaches, a sore neck, shoulder, and back, back problems. And so screen, screen fatigue is associated with all the physical symptoms that you had mentioned earlier. So what can we do? What are some tips that we can do to prevent screen fatigue, also known as computer vision syndrome? So fortunately, eye strain and dried eyes are easily treatable. Dr. Gardner, who I mentioned earlier, recommends using artificial tears several times throughout the day. Another tip is simply remind yourself to blink from time to time. If eye strain and headaches after looking at the computer screen for a long period of time, make, your, make sure that your eye glass prescription is up to date. Contact lens wet wearers are advised to switch to glasses when using computers for long periods of time as they're more likely to end up with dry eyes. And for those that uh, find it helpful in terms of dealing with the light, there are blue light glasses or filters that cut back on the blue light LED that is emitted from the screens. And this affects our circadian rhythms and our, can contribute to sleep problems. And one thing that we could do to prevent computer vision syndrome is turn off your screens, shut them down a few hours before bedtime and switch to another activity. Another tip to deal with screen fatigue is to create a workspace. So make sure that you adjust your environment can help you reduce the risk of developing computer vision syndrome. This means having a dedicated space to work. Ideally, a separate space is helpful. Preferably your workspace allows some natural light to come in. And as you're gonna hear from the ergonomic uh, individual who's gonna come in, have a supportive chair and a computer laptop that is positioned ergonomically. It is recommended that, it, that if you were to look at your computer screen that you should be able to stretch out your arm fully and then you should have enough distance between you and your screen. So sit about two feet away from your computer screen to reduce eye strain. Make sure the center of the computer monitor is slightly lowered and at eye level, four to eight inches. 
And you could use a matted screen to reduce the glare of the smartphone, computer screen, or tablet. Use a larger font to keep your eyes from working harder to see the letters and reduce glare by softening the lights. Another recommendation that I have for you, particularly if you're experiencing, in addition to screen fatigue, Zoom fatigue, is make sure that your physical space is different from your personal space. So what that means is, is that where you are doing your work call should not be where you're taking your personal calls. So make sure that they're different and that, they, and that you can have a clear distinction between the two. The best advice to use is the 2020 method. This is one simple method to combat the issue of sore eyes and CVS. And it is when you force your eyes to take the much needed break, which can be accomplished by using this method. So what this stands for is that for every 20 minutes, you stare at your screen, you stare away at something else 20 feet away for a total of 20 seconds. This forces your eyes to readjust and to relax, giving your vision a moment to recover before focusing back on your computer. So what I do recommend is that before you get on your next video call, try the 2020 method and also do it if you can, even in the middle of a session. So what I'm gonna ask is if I stop sharing for a moment, I'm gonna ask everyone to practice this. What I would like them to do is, I would like them to look, whether it's outside their window or somewhere in the room at something 20 feet away for 20 seconds. And I'm gonna monitor the 20 seconds. So I would like everyone to look away for tw at 20 feet away, find something besides, your, besides the screen. And we're gonna do it for 20 seconds. So thank you all for doing that activity. And I think it's a really simple exercise that you can do. Um, another exercise that we're gonna see now when I share the screen, it's called eye yoga. And so um, if it's possible, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna show you some movements, but I'm also have a little one minute video to show you that hopefully you'll be able to do. Um, I do apologize because once I share my full screen, I don't see any of your beautiful faces. So, um, but uh, hopefully uh, everything is going smoothly otherwise. So another technique to consider is uh, what is referred to as eye yoga. This is found in the literature. Um, if, um, and so basically, eye yoga is simple exercises that you can try throughout the day in order to give your eyes a rest um, from screen fatigue. And so a simple way to do it is you look to the left and you hold the position once again for what you feel comfortable for. So we're, I'm going to ask you guys to try this, to look to the left, hold the position. We're going to count to five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then you do it by focusing on the right. So you look to the right and you hold that position for five. One, two, three, four, five. You repeat this through each exercise. So you could do up and down, sideways, do a rotation, stare at your nose. And of course, what is really important, especially for screen fatigue, is to blink your eyes. So what I'm gonna ask you all to do, even though I can't see you doing it, is can you blink your eyes three times? So one, two, three. Now, what I do hope is that I will be able to show this video from the beginning. So this is, um, it's, her name is Meredith Aman and she is from UC Health Integrative Medicine team. And she demonstrates a one minute yoga exercise to relieve eye strain. What I do recommend is that if you can practice it with her, please do so. I think you will enjoy it. Hi, my name is Meredith Amen with the UC Health Integrative Medicine team. We're gonna take the next minute to do a quick, easy exercise designed to relieve tired eyes from looking at a computer screen or sitting and standing under fluorescent lights. We'll begin by taking a nice, comfortable seat, sitting up nice and tall, relax your shoulders, bring the shoulders onto the back of your body. And we're gonna begin by just rubbing the palms together. Create a little warmth in the hands with a little friction, and you can do this for five, 10, 15 seconds. And then once the hands feel nice and warm, we're gonna cover the eyes, placing the heels of the hands on the cheekbones, resting the palms on the brow bones and letting the fingertips rest on your skull. Let your shoulders melt away, let the eyes be closed. 
and just notice and feel the warmth of the hands and the darkness. Notice if you see any flashes of light, any colors. Let your breath be natural and smooth. And then when the lights and the colors fade to black, open your eyes into the darkness and release the palms back onto the thighs. And this is something you could do for as long as you'd like and as often as you'd like. Thank you. So I do hope that everyone was able to practice it. It's a really simple exercise to do. And as you can see that there's different ways of practicing eye yoga that can be benefit, very, very beneficial to help with screen fatigue. Um, I hope that it will let me go. Okay, so the next tip um, that I would like to suggest for you to you is one that is really important um, and uh, it's about building in breaks. And this one is extremely important for many reasons. What we heard at the beginning of the pandemic was the importance of routine, 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 routine. And that is extremely important. When you plan your day, plan your day as if you were going into work. Take breaks. This includes your regular breaks, your lunchtime break, and also this will help you to maintain your focus, increase your motivation, which the you asked for, reduce those um, screen fatigue symptoms, and we have to also understand something, that not all breaks are equal. Sli simply switching from one screen-based activity to another online platform is not enough. We take breaks so that we can restore our energy and capacity. A break that is truly restorative is an opposite action activity. What this means is, is that for many of us now, our work has become very sedentary. And that means that we are often sitting at the computer and in front of the screen. An opposite action activity would be getting up and getting active. This break can be five minutes where you can dance, where you can stretch. And this is way more restorative than doing five minutes of doom scrolling on Instagram. Use your breaks intentionally to recharge. It's important to avoid scheduling back-to-back -back meetings. If you can, schedule time between your virtual meetings. Figure out what you need in that moment. If you need time alone, take it. If you need time with a real live person, seek out an opportunity while keeping safe. If you need to move just a little bit, then do that. This is really important. So what I'm gonna ask you all to do now, because once again, um, I'm gonna stop sharing, is I'm gonna ask all of you to engage in a stretching exercise. So each of you have your own limitations about how you can stretch, but a very simple stretching exercise is just literally putting your hands out to the side, right? And find it is, is that even if you cannot get, um, Yes, so I see all of you are doing that. Now, one important thing is, is that if everyone was willing to stand up, this is a really important thing to consider. And uh, Dr. Kali often talks about this, is that we get up and we actually do like a Superman pose. So whatever is your superpower is you can put your hands on your hips. You can put yourself into a victory stance. But the idea behind it is, is that you could say to yourself, I've got this. I'm gonna be able to get through the next meeting. I'm gonna be able to do the exercises that I need to do. But this is really, really important when we think about taking a break. So I'm gonna ask you all to come back to your, your computer screens. And I thank you all for participating in this. It's much appreciated. And I wanna talk about, the next thing that I wanna talk about is what uh, is referred to as transition rituals. And this is really important also to consider when we talk about the importance of how to set up our day to kind of navigate and manage screens fatigue. So what is a transition ritual? If you think about it, we often spend our days transitioning between individual tasks and projects, and we transition between larger blocks of time like from our work day to our personal life. When we went into work, and for those of you that have returned to work, part of your transition ritual was actually leaving your house and commuting to work any way that you did. My transition ritual involved walking to the Metro, taking the stairs down to the Metro, and then heading off to Concordia. 
getting off the glycine cordia metro and then doing the same type of activity. What I needed to do is, is I needed to integrate the commute ritual into my day to help me navigate that Zoom fatigue. And so what we realize is, is that we don't bounce back aimlessly from one thing to another. That sometimes we need to mark transitions, these rituals to signal to our brain that we're transitioning in and out of our day. So I know that one of the requests that was asked of is that how do I how do I navigate the end of my day? One thing to do is, is to make sure that you have a transition ritual. For me, it is turning on music and that indicates to individuals that I'm wrapping up my day and that I will be ready to engage with them in a short period of time. We also need to mark transition rituals between our screen time. What that means is, is that you probably had a lot of transitional rituals as you start and stopped your class or even when you took a break. Those could have been going to the washroom, getting a cup of tea or coffee, walking into a colleague's office to chat. You probably had tons of habits that function, function as transition rituals without even thinking about them. But they helped you perform better at work. They helped increase your motivation. They helped you with self-care and they helped you to refresh and unwind. There are a lot of transition rituals that you can put into your day. I am going to talk about some of them, just list them off. But as, we, as I showed you before, it can include stretching, getting a glass of water, brewing yourself a cup of coffee, but being mindful or tea, being mindful while you're doing it, doing a bit of exercise, going for a walk, even if it means only around the block, taking your dog out, calling a friend or a loved one for a quick chat, knocking out a chore, reading, listening to music, doing a meditation, even taking a shower, and eating a proper meal. All of these are done intentionally to help you transition in and out of your activities. This will help you with starting, stopping, and switching between tasks. So it could put you in the right headspace to stay on track. The next slide talks about one thing that I think is really important, and it has been um, it, it used a lot, particularly for us managing the pandemic. It's important to take a break from our screens and go outside. When you go outside, look at the objects in different distances and in natural life. Put away your phones, unplug yourself from the screens, and this is gonna be beneficial for your eyes and your sight. And your sight. So don't eat lunch at your desk. Get up and go outside if you can, even if it means a five minute walk around the block. This is a good way for you to also practice mindfulness because when you are outside, you can take in nature and appreciate its beauty. Now, another sign that we have when we are dealing with screen fatigue is that we often have a hard time focusing. So you join a video call and you're one of nine faces on the screen. In this case, one of 80. And 10 minutes into the call, your mind starts to wander and you realize you have no idea what the last person just said. You pretend to keep listening while also checking your inbox. By the end of the meeting, you've caught up on some emails, but ultimately felt like there was, that was another waste of time. For many of us right now, this scenario sounds all too familiar. And so this is one way that we could deal with screen, uh, this lack of focus and screen fatigue is to ground your attention. So I wanna bring us back to that mindful activity that I had mentioned earlier. There are some tips to help us maintain focus and listen more effectively in your next virtual meeting. So take a few minutes before you click start to settle in and ground your attention. Put both feet on the ground, take a few breaths, Fill your body on the chair, notice whatever is present in your mind and allow yourself to arrive fully in the moment at hand. If you're feeling unsettled or preoccupied, you might place your hands on your heart in a supportive and com comforting way and say, I am here for you. It's okay how you feel at this moment. What I would like to do now is I would like to run you through a grounding exercise. Now, grounding exercises are used to help us to bring us to the present moment, to focus on the task at hand, to be mindful. And so if we can connect it all together. A grounding exercise is when we use our body and our five senses to be fully present. And there are different types of grounding exercises. There are mental grounding exercises, like reciting your favorite song or for example, counting backwards from 100 in series of seven. 
There are self-soothing grounding exercises like visualizing your favorite, pra your favorite place. And there are physical grounding exercises like we're gonna to do today. So what I'm gonna ask you all to do is to look around your environment and to notice five things that are blue. When you have noted them, what I would like you to do is in your, if you could give me a reaction by giving me a thumbs up so I know that majority of you have found it. So five things that are blue, perfect. So I'm gonna pick on somebody here. So Katie, since I saw you got it, Katie, when you were looking for five things that were blue, did you see anything else? Were you thinking about anything else? Um, not really. I was just looking for blue and I was like, wow, I actually have a lot of blue in my apartment. <laughs> So the purpose of this exercise, the grounding exercise, is that it only focus on the task at hand. This is what being mindful is about, is that you're doing one task at a moment. So thank you, Katie, for speaking up in this big group. I really appreciate it. Um, but that's the purpose of it, right? And so if we go through the rest of the mindful exercise, is I would, and because of time, I'm not going to do it because I want to be able to give you time to go into your breakout rooms and to come back. But I would ask you, what are four things that you feel? And this can be, for example, the clothes that you're wearing, your feet on the ground, your back on the chair. Um, it could be, for example, if you rub your hands together, what it feels like to rub your hands together. Um, this would be things that you feel. The next thing would be, what are three things that you hear? So you hear my voice, perhaps you hear the noise of the keyboard or some background noise that you have in your place or birds chirping like I do outside. But these would be things that I hear. What are two things that I smell? Well, some people would say I don't have anything around me that smells good, but some of you might have coffee or your favorite cup of tea. Others of you might have a snack. You could even smell, for example, uh, your skin or, your, or the fabric software of your clothes. And the last thing is one thing that you taste. But what I often ask people to do here is, is I ask them is, can they name one thing that they like about themselves or one thing that they're grateful for? So I'm gonna ask you all in the chat box, if you could write for me, what is one thing that you are grateful for today? Thank you. So we have some great answers coming in. For a lot of people, it's about their health, it's about the weather outside, their coworkers, their family members. Um, and uh, so thank you all for adding them in. I'm gonna let you continue. Thank you. So I'm gonna go back to the, uh, to the to sharing my screen for one minute um, before we go into the breakout room. So, uh, Another thing that I want to highlight, which is really important as we are in this virtual world now, is that we need to resist the urge to multitask. It's easy to think that you can use the opportunity to do more in less time, but research shows that trying to do multiple things at once cuts into performance because you have to turn certain parts of your brain on and off for different types of work, switching between tasks can cost you as much as 40% of your productive time. Researchers at Stanford found that people who multitask can't remember things as well as their singularly focused peers, which goes back to the concept of being mindful, doing one task at a time. So the next time that you're on a video call, I suggest Close all the other tabs or programs that might be distracting you. For example, your inbox. Put away your phone and stay present. We know it's tempting, but try to remind yourself that the message that you, that you got can wait 15 minutes and that you can probably craft a better response when you are also not on the video chat. Now, some people say that despite their best efforts to listen, it's natural for your mind to wander during a virtual meeting. It happens to even the best listeners. As with meditation, try to gently note the distracting thought and return your attention to the virtual meeting. It helps to have a piece of paper and a pen next to you. The act of writing down the wandering thought allows you to put it somewhere so that you return to it later after the meeting has ended. You can also write down any distracting thoughts before the meeting starts which can help you to be more present and to listen better. We're gonna go into, I wanna just talk about um, the breakup rooms. 
So what I'm gonna, what's gonna be happen now is that you're gonna be divided into breakout rooms. Where in your breakout rooms, I would like you to discuss what strategies you will use to cope with screen fatigue. For some of you, some of the strategies you have tried and perhaps maybe you're the expert on them so you could talk about what has worked. For other people, it's what strategies will you try and also how can you put it into practice? So if you just said, okay, I'm gonna try I yoga, how am I gonna put it into practice? And so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, exit, stop sharing. All right, so the rooms are, I have opened them up here. So we've got about five people per room. Uh, you should be automatically redirected. If not, sit tight, we will get you sorted soon. Um, and here we go, there will be a help button. If you encounter any issues, uh, you will be able to ask for help and we will come in. And maybe Check just out. tell them how long they're in the breakout room so they have an idea. Uh, yeah, so this session is supposed to go until about 5.30. So we will be in the breakout rooms for a little under 15 minutes, maybe about 15 minutes, just about. I will set a timer. All right, here we go. So everybody's coming on back. I'll just back. wait till all those breakout rooms are closed. Hello. So I do have one last activity uh, to do um, to come back from this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen for the last activity. And it's going to be similar to the first one, the three, two, one waterfall. Um, but so what I would like you all to do is I'm going to ask you, to, and I want you to write the answers in the chat box, but don't send them yet because it's three, two, one waterfall. But a lot of you talked about, for example, strategies that you could maybe try to implement uh, moving forward. And this is about a change process. So when we have to make a change, we have to make a commitment. And the commitment has to be public and shared because we're more likely to follow through on our goals when we do that. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is, is I'm gonna ask you to think about what is one thing I will commit to do when it comes to combating Zoom, uh, sorry, screen fatigue. And I'm gonna ask you to write your answer in the chat box. Wait for my cue to send it. But remember the question is, what is one thing I commit to do to combat to alleviate screen fatigue. And three, two, one, waterfall. See how beautiful it is when all these answers are coming in? So take regular breaks, less time on the screens, um, 2020 method, step away, go, go for a walk, stretching, take breaks. Thank you all for sharing. So my final message before I hand it back, I think it's to Frank, is do something today that your future self will thank you for. You're all here for a change. That's why you signed up today. And I think that that is wonderful. So please consider doing something that you were willing to change, put into action. Thank you so much for really for walking us through through this and for standing us through this and for directing our eyes in different places. I'm sure that there are lots of practical techniques that we can all uh, grab from here. Also, if you can, those who um, with your respective consultants, even if you reach out specifically and say, I tried this in class and it worked and my students appreciate it, reach out to your local consultant and get back about the session and say, you know, there's a few things, a few jewel, a few pearls, like you are mixing up pearl and jewel of wisdom that I got from this session in order to alleviate uh, both my physical and mental stress. So thank you again for participating. Just um, those of you who are not familiar, it's your first time in Apre Cole, please do visit the website. There's lots of interesting things going on there. And so far as, and so far as EPC and RIC are concerned, we have two more uh, Apre Cole coming up, one April 16th. Uh, the, these are for the science teachers. And the following one is on ergonomics, uh, which is a nice follow-up to this presentation on April 22nd. So as always, uh, be on the lookout uh, from your administrators. You will get more information concerning these two uh, upcoming uh, Apre Cole sessions.